Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this third part of our interview with Louis Vermeers, we're going back to the future to see what autonomous vehicles will look like and how aerodynamics will play a role in all this. Enjoy the interview. Autonomous vehicles, for example. Yeah. The role of aerodynamics will obviously change because the use case will change. We might have autonomous vehicles, uh, we might have different speeds, we have sensor locations that need to be kept clean, otherwise they don't function properly. What is your vision on how autonomous vehicles will change the market and specifically their role towards aerodynamics? To, to, to be honest, I question if, if uh, aut autonomous would change so much aerodynamics or vice versa. Okay. I think um, if you look a bit at the bigger picture, I think what it's about is that uh, that the future unquestionably needs to move towards higher efficiency uh, to be more sustainable, but also to to lower uh, cost of the of the use, which is very very important because if we really want many people to have access to for example electric cars mm -hmm. we still need to work on the cost and the cost we can say and the battery is going to cost lower but if you make the car more efficient it also means that we can do with a smaller battery yep. in the same way that the small car has a smaller engine so it costs less so i think for me the big picture is that we need to continue to work on improving efficiency of cars and aerodynamics is a big part of that of course I think that uh, that counts for both cars that we will use privately and for autonomous vehicles. And I think also for still a long time, those will not be really different vehicles. Because uh, uh, first of all, there's sometimes less reasons to make them different than people think. You know, because we're a little bit blinded by a lot of concept cars which are marketing tools mm -hmm. to enrich a brand's value with uh, a sense of advancement and technology and so forth. But uh, knowing very well cars, if you then get really around the table and to really start working on an actual production car, then you will always measure yourself with the human body, with the uh, physics and so forth. And so where cars are now are, uh, of course, part of their drivetrain or part of uh, taste and, and fashion and so forth. But for a big part, they're also parts of those fundamental uh, contents of a car. That's why a Tesla 3 does not look fundamentally different than, let's say, a normal car. Actually, it looks almost like archetypical. You know, it's a bit lower in the front because it doesn't have the engine. But for the rest, it's more defined by where the people sit, where they sit compared to the wheels, how we do the cabin around that with some of the reasonings I explained before, and, and so on. So I don't see it happening that uh, if we design a purely autonomous car, we say, okay, we're going to do totally different. That's, that could happen the moment we have totally different laws for autonomous cars. Yeah, you know? yeah. level but, five, and then it's possible. Yeah. Yes, because the the one aspect that can really influence a lot is if we change the rules on visibility. Because now the the visibility you need is defining, for example, more or less the position of your A pillar. If we can get away with that, then we can fundamentally change some things. We can go more mono volume and and and, and so forth. And also safety uh, is also a big issue because I can imagine that. Once we have proven autonomous vehicles are perfectly safe, this will also impact the structure yes. of the car. And then we can really move to these bubbles moving uh, through the streets, aerodynamic bubbles, right? Yes. But indeed, I agree it will take maybe yeah. 20 years I, I did before a, we get there. Uh, I was still in Pinfrin and I did a concept car with the team in, in 2006, which was forecasting that, that, uh, that the moment uh, uh, digital systems would allow us to have active safety, so yeah. not passive safety yeah, because indeed. today's today's cars are designed and built to crash well. Yeah, indeed. The moment that we have cars that are designed to avoid crashes, uh, of course, then we get rid of a lot, a lot of the built-in passive safety. And I think that's a very interesting aspect because if cars have fully proven active safety, so we can avoid crashes, 
then we can then make them much lighter. I think that will have a, a bigger impact uh, if we could get to that point to the physiognomy of the of the car because yeah. many many things of how people sit in a car in relation to the wheel and so forth has to do with uh, with safety so that was it for the third part of our interview with louis vermeers i hope you liked it if you did feel free to share it with friends and colleagues or drop a comment below to start an interesting discussion stay tuned for more by the way because in the next video we will discuss the future of sports cars thanks for watching see you soon Bye-bye.